Welcome, Yoga for Climbers. Here we are again. This is about a full climb mountain together, a little smoothie to get our bodies, keep our bodies moving, and keep them ready for climbing when we're allowed to start back again, which we're all very excited about doing. So, we're working on the hamstrings today, really important for climbing, really helps us get up, up high with your feet and obviously with balance and breathing. But we're going to start lying down. So, lying on your back. We're just going to take a moment just to find some uh, focus, find some calm, and find a little bit of stillness. Always really important with any form of exercise, any, and especially yoga, that you check in with your body and your mind before you start. So just lying here, take a good scan of your body from head to Notice any areas of tension and just see if you can release them a little. While you're there, check in with your mind and notice the quality of your thinking just before you came to the class. Notice the pace of your thoughts. And then turning your attention inward. Onto a single point of focus. We're going to use our breathing for that. Just placing one hand on your tummy, quite low down, left knee underneath the belly button. We're just going to guide your breath so that your hands lift to the ceiling. And it's really important that you just don't just think about doing that, but that you actually push the tummy. Get a sense of inflating the belly like a balloon with the air. This makes you use your diaphragm really important for sending calming messages to the body. So just staying there, lengthening that breath now a little bit. Maybe adding a count of three or four in your head for both the inhale and the exhale. Trying to let the inhale roll into the exhale as far as the breath is And just bring your right knee in towards you, stretch your left leg away from you, make sure that leg's super active and just bring that right knee in towards your shoulders as tight as you can, holding on with both hands. Try and keep your head and shoulders down, keeping most of the pelvis evenly flat. Take one more breath, one more little squeeze of your arms and then bring the other knee in to match and swap sides. You'll see how my extended leg foot is pointing directly up and I'm pushing forward through the ball of the foot. Bringing that left knee in towards the armpit. And you just breathe it a little deeper with each breath. And then bring both knees in. Take one in each hand and just circle those knees away from each other. One going in the opposite direction to the other. And you make those as big or as small as your body feels ready for. And then go the other way. Good. And then take the feet down just in front of your bottom, turn the soles of the feet together. If this feels too much, just take the hands underneath the top of the thighs so that you can sort of weight the legs or just let the knees fall over. If you want, you can tuck your tailbone a little bit just to give you a bit more space. Or you stay here a little bit longer to allow the knees to fall over. Bring 
towards the same by walking the feet out. Take them just a little bit wider than the edges of your mat. So really important with hamstrings, these are the three big strong muscles that run down the back of your thighs from your bottom to the back of your knees. Really important that you let them warm up throughout the practice and that you ease into the poses rather than pushing to your hardest um, right from the start. And then again, just stretch the left leg out, bring the right knee in. This time you're just going to keep the hips down, both hips, including the left side. Just bring the right knee down. Let's hold on to the knee. Try and keep the left shoulder down, left foot. And then swap sides. So all of these exercises, these are just general mobility exercises for warming up the foot pads. Breathe into these poses. Just bring that knee back in. And you just get a little massage on the low back by bringing the knees together now, but circling them around one way. And then lightening up our back and our core a little bit, you're just going to roll the knees back towards you and come up to the balance. And then back. And up to balance. And one more. And up to balance. Hold it there. Bring the knee. Hold on to the knees if you have to. Breathing in. Breathing out. And just cross your legs. And come to sit. Doesn't matter which way you guys are facing. Do you want to sit comfortably? I'm just going to bring my arms up. Drop the shoulder blades right down your back. Turn the points of your fingers towards each other. And just push. Lift the ribcage off the hip. So you're lifting the whole torso. Push the seat down. And then just take your right hand down and lean. Turn the chest back. And then inhale, come up. And exhale, bring the knee. Inhale, come up. Always make sure you go as tall as you can first and then bring the hand to the knee, the opposite knee, and the back of the mat. Sit tall, keep the back of the head back. Take a little twist, a gentle. And then inhale, and go the same the other way. So when you twist, you twist from the middle, rather than just the head and the neck. Good. And then inhale, if you can, you're going to lean forward, take your hands down. Keep the sit bones down behind you. Bring the collarbone through and fold forward. So you're trying to keep the length of your body, front body, as long as you can. Try and gaze just in line with your hand. This is called your drishti, where you take your gaze, and that's where you're intending to lean towards. Right. Inhale, come up, take the hands behind you. You're going to bend at the elbows a little bit, even if the chest. Breathing in, and up. breathing out, that's it, and then release that down. Come over onto your hands and knees. We do this in every class, it's all part of warming up. So when you place yourself in what we call, we call this tabletop, so the shoulders are always just a little bit behind the wrists, never, never in front because that strains the wrist quite a lot, and the knees are under the and we're just going to lower the spine and just curve gaze. And then push down through the hands, push up through the spine, as far up through the shoulder blades, getting them as broad as you can, looking back towards your heart. This time, as you inhale, lower the spine, look forward. Imagine to drive the hands back towards your knees so you get a little bit stronger activation there. And then as you push down this time, 
have to push all the way down, but pushing to the top of the feet so you can lift the knees off the ground. One more of those. Heels with the hands, imagine to drop forward, then drop through. And then one more round the other way. And you're just lifting the knees about an inch, so you're pushing through the tops of the feet. Tuck the toes, sit back on your heels, bring the hands up, bind up the fingers, and just circle them one way or the other way. I find that really helpful. And you can do this anytime during the practice, your wrists feel like they need rest. Just release your hands. And just see, I find this really tricky. If you can move back, you need to squat. Your heels can stay lifted, and then back. Try and move with control, knees down, try and lift up, both knees at the same time, and back, and one more, slide the hands back towards the front of your mat, shoulder distance apart, pushing down through the base of your thumb and your first finger, tuck the toes, put the bottom back towards the heels and lift the knees, whilst you do the pull, but then lift the bottom up and back without moving your shoulders forward. Just take one heel down, stretch that leg out, bend the other, and then get the other one. Down back again. Down then back again. Now just one more of those. And again. And then this time, take the right heel down, but take the left toes onto your Achilles heel of the right foot and push back but at the same time lift your sit bones your bottom up so you're pushing the heel down with your left foot but you're lifting your bottom up and your thighs back and then swap feet so you're taking your foot onto the heel push it down but then lift the bottom up and back this is starting to get into your hamstrings before you feel it Keep the hands working evenly, right and left, straight up. And bring the feet back down. Turn the heels in towards each other. Charlie Chaplin style. Make sure you, you can get the heels down and just start to work the chest back. And then bring the feet separate. They're always in line, usually in line. And then you're just going to walk the feet forward. What is as straight a leg as possible. Come up on the fingertips. Bend the knees here and fold down. Hang on to your elbows and just swing your toes. So the top half of you move from side to side. And the knees are as bent as you need them to be at the moment. So challenge them quite a lot as we go through the practice. And bend the knees even more. Take the arms back behind you. So you're looking forward. You're in a position a bit like a skier. Imagine someone pulling you up from the chest and stand up. Push down through the feet. Lift the arms all the way up. Push down again through the feet as you look down. Bring the hands down. We're going to work through some sounds and we're going to add the legs in. So you're going to inhale, push down towards the feet. Exhale, fold at the hips, bend the knees and take the hands towards the ground, let the head go. Inhale, slide the hands up, straighten the legs a little bit, bring the chest up, shoulders back. Exhale, bend the knees, take the hands down, let the head go. Inhale, bend the knees a lot and come up just like we did before, up the floor, moving up the feet. If you're ready, add a little back bend if you want to. And exhale, bend the feet. Well done. Inhale, push down through the feet. Exhale, fold forward. Remember, hinge your crop up, not the rock. Bend the knees, hands go down, head relaxes. Inhale, slide the hands up, lift the chest forward. And exhale, fold all the way down. Bend the knees, come up. Lift through the heart. And exhale, bring the hands down. One more of those, warming up the legs all the way. Exhale, fold forward. Try and add the breath. Inhale, 
Left the knee, slide the hands up, exhale, fold, and then come all the way up, and exhale the hands down, a little more this time. Inhale, sit down and out, come to the Exhale, and fold forward. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, chest step back with the right foot, right foot back. Take the right knee down. Inhale, lift your arms up. Exhale, take the hands down. Step back, downward facing dog. Inhale, lift that right leg up again. Keep the chest facing forward. And then bend that knee and squeeze from the hip towards the spine. So you're trying to lift the knee up and back, but the heel towards the bottom. And then see if you can turn the chest back towards the floor. Good. Lovely. Then inhale, bring that right foot forward. Drop the left knee down this time. And come all the way up. Keep that nice present knee. Good. And exhale. Hands go down. Step back to downward facing dog. Lift the left leg up. Point the toe. Bend the knee and open the hip. So you're taking the heel towards the bottom, lift the knee up towards the ceiling, okay. and then turn the chest back towards the hand. So you're working in both directions. What a work. And then exhale, bring that left foot down. And you're just going to walk the feet forward again. And fold them. Hang out here for a moment, breathe in. Breathe in. Breathing in and leaving it. And then inhale, this time slightly less bend in the knees, but still lifting up the back. Come all the way up. Push down through the heels and out. Good job. And exhale down to the heart. Well done. And again, inhale, really well. Exhale, fold forward. Challenge your hamstrings a little bit, maybe a little less bend. Let the head go. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, step back again with the right foot, take the knee down. And the inhale, come up to that high lunge, that present lunge. Sorry. And then exhale, take your hands down inside your left foot. Inhale, sink the hips forward towards that front heel. And then maybe roll onto the outer edge of that foot. Maybe you'll see the big toe. So keep that right hand down, and maybe lean back against that right hand. Breathing in, breathing in, and then bring that foot back down, and you're just going to start to sit back. So the chest reaches forward, the hands reach back, take it easy, push through the ball of the foot, and start to reach your chin towards your feet. Do what you can. A little stretch in there. We're not having to go all the way forward. Just give it a go. And then come back. Step back to down. Thank you. So lift the right leg up. And open up like you did before. And exhale. Just bring that right foot forward now all the way. Come down onto your left. And you inhale, first of all, just shift that foot forward if it gets a bit stuck. Lift the arms up. So you've got your present lunge mastered. The hips are sinking. And then the hands come down inside that right foot. And you just, first of all, if it feels okay, you roll onto the right edge. Lift the toe, push the ball of the foot. Maybe if you want a little bit more, you can come up like this. Maybe you start to sink back. Again, we're early on in the session, so take it easy. Just see how it feels. Just going to keep the heart moving forward and the hips moving back. So not right back, lovely, in two directions. Having a nice stretch. The more you bend it, the easier it will feel. Hands move back a bit 
small heart will forward to the ball. And then bring the hands forward. Step back into downward. Eight to the shoulders from the left leg up. Take that last two legged start of it. Good. Just come back towards the ground. Keep lifting the knee up. Good. Go back to downward facing dog. And then we just walk the feet forward to behind the hands again. And fold. But this time we're going to stay that slightly more active. So we're going to take your peace fingers, your first and second fingers, and take them around the big toe so that your inner wrists are facing each other. You're going to lengthen your chest forward, keep a few bend in the knee as much as you need. And then try and lie your tummy on your thighs. And then those shoulders. Move them back up towards your bottom. Now the head home. Make sure you can shake it yes and no. And then just challenge yourself to lift and straighten the hips up and to the top. So you should have a good bend in them. There's no prizes for forcing the hamstrings too early. You're lengthening the front body down the leg. Let the head shake yes and no. Again, lift the hips a little bit more. Weight in your toes and your heels. One more breath in. One breath out. And then come halfway up. Bring your hands and slide them all the way underneath the feet so that the toes are tickling the wrist. Feet are hip distance and nicely straight. And then tuck the tummy in and fold forward again. And remembering to move those shoulders up. And then let's find the breath. Three breaths in and out. Straighten a little bit more. Exhale, fold a bit deeper. Inhale, lengthen, shoulders relax. Exhale, fold a little bit deeper. One more. Inhale. Exhale, fold. And then inhale, release your hands to your hips. Exhale, there. This time, keeping the legs much more straight than we've done already, we're going to hinge at the hip and come all the way up. Reach up and exhale down to the bottom. Good. And one more sun salute. Slightly different pose. Inhale, up. Exhale, fold forwards. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, step back. This time to plant. Bring the heart forward, heels back. Take the knees down. Here's the chaturanga. Hips stay lifted. Shoulders come down in line with those hips. Elbows together. Feet down. And then lie all the way down. Inhale up to cobra. Good. And exhale back to downward facing dog. This time you're going to inhale and lift the right leg up. And you're going to Hip forward, try to kiss the knee on the way through, leaving the back leg lifted this time. If you want, if you want to take it down, you can, it just keeps the wrist forward. Inhale, coming up, lifting up to a high lunge, try and straighten through the back knee, bend the front leg. You're going to inhale, straighten both legs. Exhale, bend the back knee. Good. Inhale. Just getting your balance there if you're enough. And exhale back. Inhale. Straighten. And exhale. Just take the hands down. Step back to plank. Here we go again. So bring the shoulders forward over the wrists. Knees down. Keep the hips fixed where they are. Bring the chest through. Hover. Elbows more here. And then lie down. Inhale, strong legs this time. And exhale back to downward facing dog. Inhale, the left leg up. Exhale, step it forward. Remember, try and feel as you lift the front up high. Come all the way up to that high lunge. Straight that leg as best as you can. Hips facing forward. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bring the knees down. Nearly to the Inhale up, one more leg. Exhale. One more inhale. Good. Exhale, take it down. Hands go down. This time you come to plank. You can either use the knees or no knees, but use the no knees. Come forward on your tippy toes. 
And then this time you're going to lower down everything into low plank. So the chaturanga. Hips are lifted, elbows in, and then all the way through and up to upward facing dog. Shoulder plank. Upper arm bones turn forward and then lift through the legs, make it active. Lift the hips back to downward facing dog. And you can rest here or you can stay in your downward. Working the hands in. Okay. Inhale, look forward. Bend the knees. Slightly hold on to the ground with the tips of your fingers now as you pop your feet forward and forward. Keep the legs a bit straighter again as you come up and forward your chest. All the way up. And exhale down to your back. Double step. Really well done. Step back with your right foot. Turn the feet completely so that your right toes turn out and your left toes turn in. And have the feet about wrist distance or elbow distance apart. So your back foot. Turns in as well. You've got one foot forward and one foot turned, your left foot turned in. Good. Just take your hands on your chest and turn your chest to the long edge of your mat. Good. And then take your hands on your hips and just move the hips forward and back. Forward and back. Just getting into the pelvis rather than using the shoulders. Once you've taken them back for the last time, reach the arms up. You're going to reach forward, try to touch right in front of you, and then drop the hand down. Just let it go where it lands naturally. Don't turn your chest down. Take the top arm up. Good. And stay here and maybe deepen it in your five breath. Two. Your head can be where you want it to be, so looking down at your toes, looking sideways or looking up at your thumb. Just see how it feels. But both big toes are working and both little toes. And then engage your quads. Big muscles on the front. That will help your hamstrings relax. And then inhale, come up. We're going to reverse that trikonasana that's forward. Front leg stays straight, chest lifts. And you lean back, but you don't let this collapse in the back, you just lean back and lifting up at the same time. Good. Exhale, bend the front knee, reach forward, take your arm onto the thigh, and just take that knee back with the forearm. And then we're going to reverse that too. So you stay bent in the front knee. And you reverse. Take the front arm up and back, and the back hand around the front knee. And then come back. This is now warrior two. Straighten that front leg. Turn the back toes in now, and the left toes out. So you're setting yourself up for chicken ass, not on the other side. Just moving the hips. Good. One more. And then lift the arms. You know what you're doing on this side. Reach forward. Hand goes down wherever it lands. Turn the chest up. And lift the top arm up. Lean back slightly. And try and get long in the underside of your body. And the trick here to help the hamstrings is to engage the muscles on the front of your thigh. Keep the back leg straight. If you think it's straight, straighten it some more. Good. One more breath in. One breath out. And then inhale all the way in and up. So you're reversing the chicken up. And then exhale, bend the front knee, form on the thigh. And just use that arm to take the knee back in the line with the little toe. And the top arm comes up. Good, one breath. And then inhale and reverse that. That's called Vokanasana, side angle forward. And then coming back to warrior two. And then straighten that front leg. You're going to turn your feet in alignment with each other. 
wider apart is easier, so the wider you go here, the easier it will feel. The feet, though, are straight, so the toes don't turn out anymore, they completely straight. Lifting the heart, and you're folding forward completely. As if you're folding over a ballet bar, look forward, not down. So look forward, because that would take your chest forward. And then just take your hands underneath your shoulder. Come up, stretch again the chest, shoulders back. And then suck the tummy in and fold. And you can bend the knees here if that helps a bit. Weight in the toes and the heels. If you're really easily down, you might start to move the hands and wide of the feet a little bit. Breathing in. Breathing out. Deep and deep in each breath. So when I get to the third and fourth breath, that's how to be starting to get to the jaw rhythm. One more breath. And then just walk your hands over to your right foot and start to fold down backwards. Keep the hips in the center. And then come back around and go over to the left. Breathe it in and breathe it out. And then come back to the center. This time you're just going to bend the right knee, come up on the left heel, and bring the hands to the side. A little bit of balance, a little bit of focus. Go to the belly. Good. And then come back up. Don't worry if you fell over, that's good. It means you're working at your limit. Come back again, go through and go to the other. Yeah, come up on the side. Thank you. Good. And then come back up. And you're just going to take your forward fold, but you're going to take your feet super wide. And just go where you can get to. To begin with, try and keep the whole foot down. Know your limits. Stop when you feel like you've gone far enough. Come down onto your forearms if you stop them. And then some of you might cut, lift the outside edge of the foot up and slide the feet just that little bit further. That's up to you. One breath in, one breath out, and then slowly walk and heel toe the feet back in, come up onto your hands. Bring the feet super close towards each other, but not touching, so hip distance. Bend the knees and fold down and just take a moment here. You can let the hands go. Don't let the head go. Okay. So from here you've got a little bit of a challenge. You're going to take your fingers around the big toe again, just like you did before. And your left hand into your left hip. And then you're going to try to shift the weight into your, your left hand. Try and then to the right side. Good. Nice. Now, if your standing leg is really bent, I want you to bend the stand the lifted leg. If you're holding yourself quite straight, then you can keep that leg out and start to work to lift the heart. Bring the shoulders back and round. Move to a wall if you need a bit of extra balance. And then maybe you take the foot out to the side. So it's not easy if you're on carpet or springing floor like this. But you're going to take the leg up and out. Good. And of course, it can be bent or you can be holding on to the knee. Any of those options will do. Nice. And then take it down. We take another forward fold. This time you take the left big toe, hand, the right hand onto the crease of your right hip, shift the weight, and maybe you lift up. Good. So find your balance, engage your full, engage your pelvic floor, and then work to straighten both legs. 
breathing in, breathing out, and then maybe you open it up to the side. Stretch, stretch, stretch. And then come back, take it down. And we're just going to take the feet and take them shoulder distance apart this time. Take the bottom back. Let everything hang out here a little bit. Hands inside the knees, bottom down. Try and get broad across the collarbones. We've been doing this pose every week. It's nothing to do with hamstrings, but it is an interesting arm back. So you're going to take your hands down and you're going to work to lift your hips, squeeze and bring your feet together. Play with straightening your arms if that feels easy for you now. If you're new to this, just do what you can and then come back. And sit down. Lovely. So sitting up nice and tall. Dandasana. Fast pose. The forward fold really gets into the hamstring, but it also gets into the lower back here, which is part of what can create tightness in the hamstrings. It's tightness here. So often, actually, not working directly in the hamstrings working on the lower back to protect what you might need to loosen things up. So again, if you sit nice and tall, sometimes if your hamstrings are quite strong, you might need to bend the knees or cross underneath so just shift that down, lift the chest up, and you're going to imagine you want to get your rib cage up and over your knee. So lift it up, push through the balls of the feet, keep the shoulders nice and broad, in fact, take the hands back behind you to stop you moving the shoulders to the knees forward. Inhale, lift your heart. Exhale, tuck the tummy in, try and go a bit further. Inhale. Exhale. So if you're working to really try hard, get those feet nice and straight. One more breath in. And exhale. And then inhale. Bring the hands back, fingers face forward. Bring the feet in. You're just going to push down through your hands and feet. Lift the knees over your ankles. Tummy up, lift the chest through, let the head go back, stretch everything out, make sure the feet are engaged, hands are engaged. Smooth your breathing in, smooth your breathing out, exhale, letting it all go down. Good. I'm facing forward, just stay where you are. You're going to bring your right leg in. If you stand at your chest, now you're going to, the foot touches onto the inside of the thigh, but if your knee is sore, just make it lower back. You're okay here. Again, make sure you're upright in your pelvis, not rounded back. And if you're rounded back, just take a pillow and prop underneath. Just part. Again, ribcage is going up and as if to go over your knee. That's the priority rather than getting down. So in fact, you're aiming to go forward. Breathing in. Try not to pull on anything, but you can rest your hands back. Breathing in. Breathing out, breathing in, breathing in. One more breath in, one breath out. And then inhale, come up. And a strength challenge if you want it, if you don't, just swap sides. If you want it, you can press down through your hands. Hands, swap, swap, swap. Up to you. I have to do it on my fingers rather than the or if you've got blocks, even better. So anyway, just get to the other side. Sit nice and tall. Tilt the pelvis with a block or just with your own body. Just keep your foot nice and straight. So the foot being straight is what evenly stretches the hamstring. So you keep your knees nice. Breathing in. Breathing out. Breathing in. Breathing out. One more breath. One breath out. And then inhale, come up. And we're going to do here what we call a vinyasa. It comes from Chinese yoga. You can choose to leave it out if you want. So you basically bring your feet in if you need to repair, and you're going to jump back to that low chest line pose. Come through it up. And exhale, go back. 
modifications for that, I'll just show you. If you're watching this at home, what can I do? You can just step back, slide, knees down, hips down, and all the way up. Back to down dog, and walk down. Fast version and the slow version. Either's fine. So this time you're going to bring the right leg in again, but you're going to take the ankle on top of the knee. It's a bit funny feeling bone on bone there. But hips are even, sitting at nice and tall. Remember these feet are active in order to switch the muscles on. And take hold again. Now here's where you get into the hips again. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in. Working forwards, inhale, keep the hips straight, little toe as well. One more, inhale, exhale, anything you do, bring the foot in, and again, you can either just swap sides, or do it again, two, three, and sit down. <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> just take it on to the top of the knee. Keep the feet active and we do a nice big inhale for the foot there. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. One more inhale. Look forward, chest in. Inhale, come up. Exhale, we'll meet. You guys staying face forward on your mat. You can cross and lift now, which is here. Or take one of those vinyasas. So jumping up. Coming through and up. Exhaling the down of that. We're just all going to meet in downward facing. However you get there. Smoothly breathing in. Smoothly breathing out. If you want a little breath in child's pose, let's do a little easy scan here. Lift the hips, eyes move back. Breathing in. Breathing in, steady your breath. And then inhale, lift the right leg up. Exhale, step it forward towards your right hand. Bring the back knee down. Just take that stretch we did earlier on in the class and see how it feels. Heart moving forward. See if it feels any different. But then move forward again. Take your hands down. Take the foot just off the mat. Start to sink the hips forward. Come up on the heel of that front foot and just see if you can push it forward. For those of you who need a bit of modification on that, take it out to the side and forward. But if you can, try and keep the hips forward. Smoothly breathing in, smoothly breathing out. Hanumanasana. A leap of faith. Good. And then bring everything back in. Take yourself right back up to down the place and go. Keep the leg as shaky as you want. And take the left leg back. Good. So stepping it forward, coming down into that low lunge. First of all, just stretching back so you have a hamstring squeeze. Also, warming it up a little bit. Can't move through. Move the hand forward and just like before, you either take the foot out of the diagonal or as close to being moving it forward as you can. And you just come onto the top of the back foot and work to sink the hips up. Just do what you can, don't never overdo it in these moments. Starting to find a place to let go. Breathing in. The hands are there to support you, keep your torso lifted. And then come up. Let's all take ourselves to knees down, uh, knees apart, our feet together, and just resting down. Just a little back bend. And a little waist.
your knees together and you're just going to sit your bottom off to one side. So you end up with one foot tucked into the other. It gets a bit off kilter, that's okay. And whichever side of the feet, you've got the feet, you take that hand over to the other side. And then you take the other hand just a little bit further round. So you can take a gentle step to keep the tummy drawn in towards the spine. Yeah, so you're turning away from your feet. And then, though, you lift the head up and over, and you might look down at your feet. This is mermaid pose. So you have to imagine your long golden hair streaming down your back. Beautiful. That's really nice. And then come back, and you're just going to wheeze your legs up and over the other way. Again, remember you're turning away from your feet. Tummy strong to protect your low back. And lift the head up. And over, and look past your shoulder at your feet. Really nice. And then come back to the centre. Release your feet. Bring the soles of the feet together. Um, and just a little bit away from you, so that you can ground into that. So this time you can do what you want with your shoulders. You don't have to keep the chest forward. Just make this feel nice for you. Breathing in and breathing out. Good. And then coming up. Keep hold of the base of the big toes. We need a lot of your big toe lock today. Good for your fingers. We're just going to bring your feet up and sit down. This is stage one. So this is harder for men than women. It's diff more difficult for men not to rock back onto the chair there. So just trying really hard to stay upright. If this is enough for you, stay there. If you can lift the legs up, do. But concentrate on bringing the chest forward and the arms down. Chest, not chin, if you can help it. Good. And then maybe you can straighten your back. Good. Whatever you do here is amazing. Good. And then you bring your feet together. Maybe you bring your feet in if you need it. Good. So this is just the forward fold that you did earlier on with the toes. And then release your hands. A little bit of core, a little bit of quad work just to give your hamstrings a break. And then bring the knees down. Take the feet away from you and take one more forward. Good. So we're working towards the end now. We've worked really hard. Just letting go here a little bit. And coming up, taking your feet just a little bit away from you. And you're just going to roll down. Good. Bring the knees in towards you. Give yourself a big squeeze. And maybe a little bit of moving around there on the lower back. So it's making the knees, making a figure of eight one way and a figure of eight the other. Good, and then take the arms out wide. And if it's okay for you, you're going to take both knees to the right side. If your left shoulder comes up a lot, just take your left hand onto that shoulder. And then you're going to work to open your chest back out. Try and keep the knees fairly on top of each other. Prioritise that more than the twist, more than the shoulder. And gently bring those knees into the centre and drop them down the other side.
your breath has to be here. Coming back into the center of your knees. Again, let's hug them in this time. You can take your head and shoulders in if you want. Like this cosmic egg. Really lovely. And then just take your feet down and slide them away from you. Take them to the far corners of your mat. Take your hands down by the side of your body, palms up. Spread your shoulder blades a little bit. Take any effort out of your breath now. So if you were doing the Ujjayi breath, then you're doing it for the back on how to do that. Um, just relax that breath. Relax your eyes. Take any expression off your face. And take your tongue from the roof of your mouth and relax it. Feel your whole body as if it's being held up by the ground underneath you. You have a sense of letting go just for a few minutes. Bring your consciousness now back to your body. And just take a little check of how it feels. Compared to when you first started, what is your breath? How is that feeling compared to when you first started? And maybe the quality of your mind now. Just notice the pace and the content. As you just begin to bring some movement to your body, just maybe ask yourself the question, is the way I do this one thing, yoga practice, is this the way I do everything? Maybe your answer to that, just an observation. Circle your ankles, circle your wrists. Maybe if your neck allows, move your head from side. And then bring your feet together and stretch them away from you. Take your arms over your head and take an almighty stretch from one end of the room to the other. 
And then the best bit, let it all go with an exhale through the mouth. Bring one knee up towards your chest. Bring the other knee in to meet it. Give yourself a good squeeze. And if you want any final movements, make them now or just roll onto your right. And then slowly bring yourself up to your feet. So you bring your hands to the chest center, thumbs at the breastbone, press the palms to the side of the head. Give yourself a little bit of thanks and gratitude for giving yourself this place in the world. Don't judge yourself, just say thank you for showing up. And then we bow to each other. You can lift your gaze and take a little bow. And we say the word namaste. Namaste. Well done, everybody. See you next time.